Welcome to Excel 2010 Statistics video number 88. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for Chapter 14, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we want to build on what we did last video. Last video, we had four different data sets, and we plotted a scatter chart. We had an x variable and a y variable, and we charted them. In the last video, we saw how to chart the uh, points and then add a trend line with the equation in R squared. In this video, I want to show you how to add a X bar and Y bar line to the chart. And why are we going to do this? Because in the next video, we're going to start our uh, heavy lifting of calculating. We're going to calculate things like coefficient of correlation, slope of the line, Y intercept, and It'll help us understand what we're doing with those calculations if we learn how to plot these two lines. Now let's look at this right here. We have a picture of where we're going. It sometimes helps. I plotted the actual x bar, which means these x values, I calculated the mean, right? And then I did the same thing for this green one for y. And I plotted them. Why did I want to do that? Because all of the, remember, each one of these points is out a certain amount x, up a certain amount of y, moving across, across the x, moving across the y. But notice if this is x bar, if we were to calculate the deviation, how far does this value deviate from its mean? Well, the deviation would be positive. But down here, this is x bar. These values are all negative. Similarly, if we plot the y bar, all of these y's up here, remember, that represents an x and a y. That value right there, and if you have your cursor, it's, it's um, 83 temperature, seven, about $7,000 in sales for ice cream. That 83, about $7,000, that value is both above the x bar and above the y bar. Down here, these are all below. So that value right there is 47 degrees, $2,637 in sales. So the x is below, and the y is below. What does that mean? Well, we're going to find that the deviation in this case, both deviations for x and y would be negative. So if you multiply them, it would give you a positive. Whereas when we have a value up here, both of the deviations will be positive. And when we multiply them, positive times a positive, we get a positive number. Down here, negative times a negative will give us a positive number. Anytime, and we've in essence divided this chart into four quadrants. One, two, three, four. So really kind of cool if we get all the values clustered here and here meaning the preponderance of values are up in quadrant one and quadrant three. If we were to multiply all the deviations, we get a big positive number. That would tell us that the, the relationship tends to be direct, or as x increases, y increases, or positive. All right, And if it was the opposite, which I'm, we're going to plot in just a second here, these values would be um, negative positive, and these would be positive negative. So if the preponderance of values are here and here, quadrant 2 and quadrant 4, then we, when we multiply all the deviations, we're going to get a, bit, a negative number. All right. So I would just want to, next video we'll do all the calculating. But here I want to build this chart, because sometimes you know a picture tells a thousand words. Right? I'm not going to, in this class, if you're taking the class, I'm not going to ask you to make this chart. Uh, for a test or anything. All right, so I'm going to create the chart, highlight the values, insert scatter right there. I'm going to delete the legend, delete the horizontal lines, delete the title, add a label. I'm going to do axis titles horizontal below. Click up in the formula bar equals and click on cell B10, which has the label for our x variable. Scoot this over a little bit. Layout. Vertical. Rotated. Equal. Uh, click. Click up in the formula bar. Equals. Click on cell C10. 
I'm going to right click add trend line. We did this all last video. Display equation in R squared. All right, I'm going to move this out of the way with your move cursor. Sometimes that's hard to get. All right, so now how do we plot those lines? OK. First, I'm going to calculate the mean for each. So I'm going to um, type uh, equals average. The mean for our x. And then equals average. We studying statistics know there's lots of different averages, but they call the function that does the mean average. All right, so I calculated both my averages. Well, how do you plot any line, right? Do you only need two points? You gotcha. So the trick is these points all have out a certain amount and up. Well, we need two points, one up here and one down here. All we need is two points, and then we can draw a line. Remember, these are from sample points, so we want the scatter points. But this, we're going to build like a little model and plot just two points, one up here and one up here, that will give us the line for x bar, and then the same thing for y bar. All right. So well, if we're plotting x, vertical. That means all the x's are exactly the same. So it's going to be x bar. So I'm going to type e. Whoops. I hit the F11 key, which is the keyboard shortcut for sheet uh, chart on a new sheet. So I'm going to right click, delete that. Delete. Let's try that again. Equal sign. Oh yeah, the F11 key is right above the equal sign. So equals that. And I'm going to hit the F4 key. Control Enter and then copy it down. Well, OK, so those are our two axes. Well, we need two y's. Any two will do. Well, look at this. I'm going to give me it myself a 0, and I'm going to look at the maximum value here. So 0 and 10,000. Now, watch this. The power of charting always comes from design and this button, Select Data. Back in Chapter 2, we did all a bunch of charting tricks. And really, the charting tricks always involve adding your own data. So I'm going to select data. And now I have the power. I'm going to kind of scroll up a little bit. All right, so this is the key I need to add. I click Add. And because it's an XY scatter, it's really played. It says, hey, give me the name you want in the legend, the X values and the Y values. So I'm going to, for series name or the legend entry, I typed in X bar. That means the uh, mean of the sample. And the x values, and that little thing as we talked about back in chapter two, that gets in the way. That's an array. You want to be sure and highlight it and delete it. Then highlight your y's. Click OK, and I'm going to click OK. We'll come back and add the another one in just a moment. But now you get two points. But this is a situation where you can change the because the two points when we plotted them took the default um, chart type for this chart. But we can change it. Right click, change series data chart type. And that's where we have a line. We made like a little model that predicts what we want. So we click OK. Zoop. Now let's do the same thing. Now x, we need, so this is this axis here. We're going to need two y's, which will be this value. Let's do that first. Equals y bar, F4 key to lock it. Control Enter, and then copy it down. And since the y is always going to be the same, right? we just need a starting x and an ending x. So I'm going to look here, a 0 and a 100. So 0 and 100. Now I click on the chart. The power of charting comes from design, select data, add, series name, y bar. Because I'm going to show the legend, and I want to show the color-coded legend to tell me what's going on in the chart. X. Ooh, that little array thing equals array symbol 1 and array symbol. Delete it. And then highlight your Y's. Click OK. Click OK. And there it is. Right click, change series chart type. Line, click OK. Absolutely beautiful. So now, look at this. This is inverse or negative. And what does negative mean? It means as we increase our temperature, 
the y value is decreasing, negative, right? The slope is negative. It's minus 100. So look at the preponderance here of points. That point right there, right there, it shows 41 and de degrees and $8,900 in sales of chicken soup, right? This is y bar. That value right there has a y that's way above y bar, but it has an x that's way below x bar. So that's got a positive and a negative number. If we were to multiply a positive and negative, the result would be negative. Down here, we have, let's pick this one right here. We have 72,500. So the actual temperature is way above the x bar and the 2,500 is way below the y bar. So this is a positive and a negative. If we were to multiply it, we would get a negative. So all of these added together would be the preponderance of all these values, since they're all in the quadrant 2 and quadrant 4, would all be negative. So our calculations we do in the next couple of videos, not only for correlation, but also for slope, will depend on this idea. The deviations, when we multiply them, if the preponderance of data points are in quadrant 2 and 4, we'll get a negative slope and correlation. If their preponderance are in quadrant 1 and 3, then we'll get a, a positive. All right, so this video, we saw how to chart this and started to talk about kind of how the, where the data points lie in the chart and how we may, might make some sense of whether it's a direct positive relationship or an indirect ne negative relationship. All right, uh, we'll see you next video.